Okay. Uh, all right. So raw images. You know, here's the. Now these are the photos that I took based on the drawings that you just saw, right? So this is uh, the ink was kind of a little bit still fresh here. Um, so I just took a snapshot of that. You can tell the lighting is not great at all. This is just fluorescent light that I, that I shot. I used a flash um, from the camera, just stock stuff. Um, and then here is the drawing that I had. Again, the lighting is not great. It's just leaning up on a table. Um, it needs work, right? So um, I want to bring these into Photoshop. I'm just going to drag them over. All right, so let me get rid of that. So my first step um, uh, is with these new photos, right, is to uh, unlock the background. Um, and then I'm going to go over to image size. And I want to see how big this image is. So it's a 48 inch uh, by 72. Okay, so um, that's good to note. Um, I'll unlock this background here for the splatter piece. Uh, make sure that that's about the same size. Yep, so that's good. Um, next I want to go image mode and then change that to a CMYK and same here uh, image mode CMYK uh, okay so now it went from RGB to CMYK because we're dealing with a print piece here um, and then I'm gonna go, go open up my uh, InDesign file I'm gonna actually create a box um, just to see then um, how large, uh, let me create a new layer here. I'll call it composition. All right, so I want to create a, a box to see how large I need this image to be. Now, take into account, um, let me just make it black here. Um, but taking into account, here's edge for edge of the box. So I'll, I'll turn these uh, invisibles off. So I just drew a box basically from this edge to the gutter here, this center panel where both these uh, pages meet, and you can see I'm about eight and a half by eleven. Oop, it was a little bit off, but you can kind of type the dimensions there, and it'll go exact. Uh, so this is an eight and a half by eleven uh, facing pages spread. But if I turn my invisibles on, right, um, you can see the bleed, right? So I want to make sure that I have a bleed on this. Um, that's where the artwork comes off the edge and then when it comes off of the press it gets cut to size uh, so it looks like the artwork is actually coming off of the page uh, seamlessly uh, so if I stretch this out we're looking at 8.625 um, it's it's rounding it out here so 8.625 by 11.25 so that's uh, um, Eight and three eighths, I believe, by eleven and a half. I want it to be. Um, uh, I want it to be eight point seven five by eight point eleven point two five. Um, that's an eight and a half by eleven inch piece with an eighth of an inch bleed on all sides. Okay, and so an eighth plus an eighth is a quarter, and so that's why we come from eight and a half to eight point seven five, and then from eleven to eight eleven point two five. 8 and 3 quarters, 11 and 1 quarter. So that's what I want my canvas to be. Even though the um, uh, the width um, comes over the gutter, that's still okay. Uh, because uh, you'll see, if you remember, this kind of bleeds over to the other panel eventually. And I want to do that. So this is my canvas. Now, this is my canvas size. So uh, I'm going to then go into Photoshop. You know, kind of mapping it out here. Um, and new. Um, I'm going to just create this new document um, and then I'm going to uh, uh, basically make sure that those uh, dimensions are located here. So that's exactly what it is. 8 and 3 quarter, 11 and 1 quarter, 300 uh, CMYK. Create. Uh, so this is my beginning. Um, then I'll just go and right away save it as. Um, then I'm going to do uh, men's section demo. Uh, version. Uh, so I just saved it as a PSD file and that's that's fine. I'm going to unlock the background right away by double clicking. Uh, create a new layer. So this is going to be the layer that I'm starting to work off of. And so I know that um, uh, this image, I want it to be in black and white. We did use the um, uh, black and white, um, black, uh, white background black marker. I'm going to change the color mode to um, um, 
right now to uh, grayscale. And I'm going to go back to CMYK, but now it's only black and only white. Um, next, I'm going to go to adjustments. So my goal here and levels. And my goal here is to really get um, the darkest darks and the brightest whites um, so I can really isolate this content um, to in order to select it. Um, so that's about as good as I can do. And you can see I still have um, other content in the background that I don't want. I'm just going to take my marquee tool, just marquee around this thing. And then I'm going to Command Shift I to select the inverse. Otherwise, I can go into my menu, select an inverse, right? Uh, hit my Move tool up here in the left corner and just delete that. My job is not done yet because I have to then, uh, in my composition, you remember my E is like way too big. You did not like the size of that. Uh, so um, I still have some more work to do. Uh, so a couple of things I'm going to do first is I am going to make this white even whiter. Um, so to target that, I'm going to go to image mode again, and I'm going to change it back to CMYK. Um, this is because I want to go to adjustments, um, and I want to uh, use the, um, what is it, uh, selective color. And so my selective color menu, I'm going to go to the uh, neutral colors. And I'm going to just suck out as much of the black as I can. And actually all of this tone uh, from the neutral. Actually, I probably want a little more black in there. So you can see it's kind of changing it up a little bit. Um, actually, I want to go to the whites now. And this is where I really want to drag out some of my before and after. I'm kind of jumping back and forth to see what it's doing. Uh, Actually, it's probably more successful uh, bringing it out of the white. So I'll go back to the neutrals and add a little bit of the yellow and magenta back in. About the same. I'll just type in 73s across the board here. Negative 73. And that's pretty good, I think. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to switch it back. So I'm jumping back to grayscale again, and here's what I want to do. The reason why I'm doing that is I want to go into my channels panel here, and you see how now I have the gray channel. Before, when I had it in CMYK mode, you would have a cyan, a magenta, a yellow, and a black channel, um, but I, this is going to make it easier to select. I'm going to then uh, have the gray channel selected, and I'm going to use this load channel as selection. And so it's just going to select the gray uh, um, uh, uh, pixels. I'm going to go to layers. And then I'm going to change it back to CMYK again. And the reason why I'm changing it back to CMYK is because I'm, when, I, when I fill this new layer that I just created here um, with the gray uh, pixels that are selected in the channel from my previous step, um, I want to actually fill it with um, uh, not just black, but I want to fill it with rich black. Um, rich black is a black that is the combination of all these colors combined. Um, and the conversion for that is 75, 67, 67, 90. Uh, different people have different conversions for that. Some will do 100, 100, 100, 100. Um, uh, but this, this um, is a conversion that I've just learned over the years. Um, and most people use that anyhow. But anyway, I learned it from someone and I just stuck with me. So I filled that and you can see that I was actually filling the white piece of it. So I want to undo that and I want to again go to image, uh, I'm sorry, select an inverse. Uh, so I'm going to then repeat that step. Go ahead, Julian, do you have a question? Or? No, I was oh. just saying select. Oh, 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 okay, that's all right. Um, Okay, so there, I, uh, uh, I filled in the actual piece that I wanted to. So I'm just going to get rid of this layer, okay? So um, let me just drag this over. You can see I have a little bit here still left, right? Um, and that's okay. Uh, I will get rid of that. Um, I'll just do that by uh, 
I'll just do that with my eraser tool eventually. Um, so I'll take this piece, this is pretty good, so I'm going to drag it over to uh, my composition here. And again, you can see that uh, we still have some pixels that are still selected, but it's pretty close. Um, what I really want to do is take my lasso tool then, and so I'm going to select these letters, because these I need to shrink, because I want to get it down to a little bit better proportion. Ooh, I kind of messed up my selection there, but that's not a big deal. I made that selection. I'm just going to shift, hold shift, and then click to add the piece that I missed here. My hand isn't as steady today. All right. Uh, so I have that piece uh, selected. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, copy, a uh, Command C, Command X. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, actually uh, make a new layer and I'm going to edit paste special and then paste in place. So I want to have that on a separate layer. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, hit command T to transform and then I'm just going to shrink it down for my men category to make it approximately the scale that I wanted it. Something like that. And it's pretty roughed in. Um, the next thing I want to do is actually uh, hide this EN piece. Um, I'm going to take um, just a simple eraser tool, I think. Um, it's going to be, um, I'm going to make sure it's really poofy at the edges here. Um, maybe I'll make it at 75% of, of its original opacity, make it nice and large. I'm just going to, actually I'm going to do it 100% because I want to make sure that all of these pixels are just gone. And then as I get closer uh, to that M piece, I'll, I'll just kind of brush it like that. Um, I want to get the major stuff out of the way. And then I'll kind of cut in here. Um, I'll take my lasso tool again and again, just really roughly around to get the rest of this stuff. Uh, then I'm going to go over to select and then uh, modify. And I'm going to hit, so I'm modifying my selection now that I currently have, and I'm going to hit Feather. And so Feather is going to apply like a blend from the outer edges of this selection. Um, so let me do, right now I have a, a, a blend of five pixels, so there's going to be a five pixel blend from 100% from to 0% along this edge. So I'm going to maybe do a 10, so it'll be a little bit poofier. And then you can't see it right now, but once I hit the Delete key, with my move tool selected and then deselect. You can see it kind of blends a little bit. It's not perfect though. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually uh, with this layer selected hit my channels panel and then hit this black channel. Load channel as selection again. And then I'm going to go back to my layer and then see if I can delete. There we go. So I deleted the black uh, channel pixels. I'll deselect. Now, so you can see that my M got really kind of faded there, but that's okay because I'm going to do is hold the Alt key here in my layers panel, and I'm going to click and drag, and you can see that I actually made like another layer on top of it um, to kind of darken it in, and then I'll just kind of adjust the opacity of this top layer here a little bit more. I'll make it, make it 50%. And then the bottom layer, again, I can still see a little bit of the edge, so I'll select the black again. Actually, let me see. I think those pixels... So every channel that I select here, you can see this edge. Um, you can see sometimes more and sometimes less, depending on what I select here. Um, so what I'd like to do to see which channel shows more of that edge. I think it's the, uh, I think it's the cyan. I'll try the black again and see I'll load that channel as a selection again. And I'll go back and then my bottom layer I'll just do a delete and then another delete here. Uh, keep going. I'll just duplicate this and duplicate it again just to like thicken it up. 
oops, cancel. Uh, it's not really working for me. What I'm going to do is actually compress these all um, uh, together. I'm going to merge layers with them all selected and just kind of go in here. Uh, get rid of that. And actually do my eraser tool. And then just with the to merge these again. And with that selected, I'll just kind of manually feather it like so. 50% will do it. Yeah, it helps it. Okay. All right. And then I'll turn this layer on and I'll do the same thing. I think I'm going to, um, first I'm going to feather the selection. And I'm probably going to try, I'm going to just hit the um, uh, spacebar key to kind of move my canvas a bit. Select all this chunk here. Uh, and then I'm going to feather again. I'll try 15. See if that gives me more. Yeah, that's better. Uh, more of a feather. And then I'll just kind of go in and refine a bit of my deleting. I'll raise this up to 70. Here we go. Well, make sure that's poofy enough. That's good. All right. So I have a little bit of off color here, so I'm just going to actually do a Command A nudge, and then I'm just going to edit fill this uh, M uh, with rich black again. I'll have to reduce the opacity. Eh, that'll work for me. So there's that uh, artwork kind of isolated. I need to actually merge both this whole word together. Um, so I'm going to merge layers uh, again here. I'll just name this uh, uh, title. And then I'll move to, uh, I'll kind of move this up kind of to the top of the canvas. I see a little bit of stuff I need to erase up top here. All right, so that's pretty decent. I'll save, uh, hit OK. All right, so um, next part of what I wanted to do was actually bring in um, the uh, raster uh, art. Uh, so what I did actually um, is I uh, went to page one here because I had this art already built out. And it's um, basically a vector file. Um, so this file, you know, when I uh, select it, it's about eight and a half by 11 approximately. Uh, so that's the size that I need. So uh, this uh, artwork is called coverconcept.ai. Um, so I'm going to actually just um, uh, reveal it in Finder and uh, open it in Illustrator. This is kind of how we're going to bring uh, Illustrator uh, together. Well, at least for me in this composition. i um, going to bring them a little bit together here. Uh, so, um, yeah, this artwork is, is literally just a bunch of... Um, patterned out circles. Uh, so I'm just going to literally just click and drag this over, uh, drop it into my composition in Photoshop, and that's it. I'm just going to uh, press enter. It's going to paste it as a vector object. And then so there's my, my pattern. Um, I'm going to uh, basically convert this vector object by control clicking it and uh, hitting rasterize layer. And that's going to make it so all these little tiny circles are selectable. Um, uh, basically change them from points and paths to pixels. 
I'll hit Command A and then nudge the, this composition and then I'll go to Edit Fill and I'm gonna fill this with uh, color and I know for sure that my color is uh, 0 cyan, 100 magenta, 100 yellow, and 0 uh, black. Hit OK. And then so I'm going to press Command D to deselect it. And I'll nudge these circles over a bit. And then so I'm, what I'm literally going to do is actually cookie cutter this title from the pixels. So I'm going to Command A with this title layer selected. Nudge that. And then I'm going to, again, do a select inverse. Um, and then with the inverse selected under my vector smart object layer, then selected, I just kind of changed it from the layers panel. I'm going to hit delete, command D to deselect. And then so these circles were just kind of cookie cuttered out. I kind of dragged it behind. And I'm going to kind of like off center it a bit like that. Um, and I'll just call it red circles here. And then I'll um, actually, on the canvas here, I'm going to uh, alt click and drag my red circles and then kind of add a little bit more at the top as I wanted to give a little bit more of that there. I'll off center this a bit too. Just kind of make it look more like messy, if you will. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to save it, and then um, I'm far enough along to where I kind of want to um, bring the um, piece into uh, InDesign. So I'm going to open back up this InDesign piece, jump back to where my blank canvas is here. Uh, then I'm just going to go with File Place. This is I'm going to kind of be able to size this up a little bit. And see what I'm working with. I uh, know. So here's our file. I'm going to select that and place it in. Uh, you can see the background changed because I have a fill background um, uh, in my Photoshop file of white. Um, so that's uh, fine. I'm going to jump back into uh, Photoshop because you can kind of see here. I don't know if you can see it too well on the screen. Yeah, you can. This this uh, this catalog has like a um, light pink color to it, um, so I want that light pink to come through. So I'm going to jump back into Photoshop, and I'm going to actually hide this background layer, this white background layer, and I'm going to save it, and then jump back to InDesign, and then update this art. Now you can see that the black came through from my original, so I'm just going to change that to none. I'm going to set that none color to that original black box that I created. Um, uh, likewise, uh, you can, you know, just like with your shoes, I can uh, select this image and then go to uh, object and object layer options. And I can even, uh, um, I can even turn on or off uh, uh, that white layer as well. Um, as well with the red circles, I can kind of say, oh, you know, do these work? Do these not? Does this title not work? Maybe I had two versions of the title. Like maybe I, I just wanted to see what it looked like with the red circles alone. If that was my title, eh, might be interesting. I don't know if that's entirely legible for me, but um, uh, just know that, you know, whatever Photoshop you place, uh, Photoshop file you place in there, you can turn those uh, layers on or off individually um, just to kind of see what works and what doesn't. So now we know uh, in the original composition I wanted to sort of, the idea was to bring attention to these shoes a little bit and to kind of kind of bring some of that, um, some of the design elements, the illustration over to the next spread um, uh, subtly. Uh, so that's kind of where my uh, splatter piece came into play. Um, but I know what I need to do is actually um, extend this canvas over a little bit because this image is going to actually bleed over to the other uh, side of the spread. So um, right now I have an 8.75 in width. Uh, I'm going to stretch this out here to see how far out I can go reasonably. I'll say 12. So this is about 12. Maybe I'll go out a little further just in case. I'll say 13, I'll say 13. So this will, oops, 
you do that right. Delete those. So this is about where I'm thinking the canvas uh, will will have like the art go. So about 13 wide. Uh, so I'll jump back to Photoshop. Here's my Illustrator. I can close. Um, I'm going to extend this canvas a little bit. You can go over to image and canvas size and then kind of select these arrows to kind of show where you want the artboard to extend and you can define how many inches I want it to extend here in this menu. Um, otherwise um, you can actually do it more visually uh, by using this uh, crop tool. So if I hit the crop tool and kind of click and, dra and start dragging this out um, you can see on the left side uh, the numbers kind of changing for width. Um, you can actually see it in real time changing and I can kind of hit about uh, 12.997 inches wide and I'll just release. Hit my move tool and just kind of reset it and it'll say crop image and I'll say crop. So it's going to re resize the canvas uh, for me just using that crop tool. And now I can see a little bit, um, if I turn my uh, white background layer on, I'll fill the rest of the canvas with white so I can see any imperfections um, in the piece. So let me go ahead and go edit fill, white. So now um, as I've stretched this out and filled the rest of the canvas with white, I can see this area that needs to be removed. Um, because I don't really want that to show up in my InDesign file, so I'll just really quickly select that and get rid of that. Um, I'll resave. Um, the original marker image I don't need. Um, I would probably recommend keeping your raw stuff, but um, if you don't need it, you don't need it. So um, The next thing I want to do is actually take this ink splatter image. It's literally just going to be um, looking at this channels menu here, and I can actually select the yellow channel and since this uh, original image has a lot of orange and yellow, if you look at this channels panel here, you can see if I select the cyan channel, there's hardly any cyan pixels in the image. Okay, so um, uh, there's not enough contrast here. You can see the level of contrast, and, it, and you can see that this image doesn't have very much cyan in it, so that's fine. It does have magenta, though. Okay, so it's got magenta. It's got a lot more yellow, though, and that makes sense because when I look at this, it's got a lot more yellow in it. Um, and then black, it's literally got like no black except for this. So if I go to this yellow channel and load this channel as selection, I'll get the most contrast out of that. I'll, I'll hit Command Shift I to select the inverse. Um, go back to my layers panel, so, uh, create a new layer, and then I'm just gonna edit fill um, with that rich black again. Um, so now I'm just actually replacing all of the yellow pixels that I selected with black. I'll get rid of this image altogether in the background here. And, and that's what I'm ending up with. So um, uh, again, this is just yellow pixels being replaced with black. Literally, I just selected the yellow channel and then just um, created a new layer in my layers panel and then just filled it with black. Um, well, rich black, cyan, magenta, yellow, black mixture. Um, to make rich black. The reason why they use rich black is um, it's blacker than 100% black ink because uh, ink is um, uh, by nature uh, semi-transparent um, so if you have more transparencies layered on top of each other it makes it more thick if you will. So um, no, that's why they would use that. So uh, the black kind of looks like a dark gray in reality um, so that's just kind of why they use rich black. Uh, so I can um, actually then uh, select this um, inverse and then I'll just start deleting a couple times to get rid of some of those gray grayish pixels out there so I have so I have very, very much less of this um, uh, gray area edge I literally just selected it uh, then selected the inverse inverse my selection and then just started hitting delete a couple times and then just drag this in here um, and then kind of position where I wanted it to drag this kind of behind mostly everything uh, so at this point uh, I'm just gonna kind of leave it like this for a second and save it and I'll jump back to InDesign 
and just kind of uh, update this art, see how it looks. All right, so it kind of resized it a little bit. I want to make sure that I have this at 100%. Um, so over here in my percentages, I'll just go 100, 100. Uh, so again, um, you can see the white background. Let's go object layer options. Hide that white background for now. So I can see that pink. Let it read for a second. Oh, maybe that was not the right layer to hide. Uh, let me go to object layer options again. Oh, that wasn't the right layer. I have more layers to go. That was my pixel. I think it's this very back one. In a perfect world, I would have named these properly. Okay, that's the one. I would have named that like white background or something. Uh, all right, so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, and I can see that I do have still a lot more um, semi-transparent uh, black pixels back there uh, that I want to kind of uh, uh, start to get rid of a little more. Uh, so let me jump to Photoshop um, and then just keep trying until I get it right. Select all, nudge, select inverse, delete. Uh, it should be okay. And then I want to actually take my lasso tool and then just kind of randomly lasso some of these uh, squares because I don't want this hard edge along the top. I want it to look more natural. Just to kind of pull some of this stuff out. This really rough like that. Oh, that wasn't good. Yeah, my goal is to just get rid of that rough edge altogether. And this selection doesn't need to be amazingly perfect. because really ink splatters are not the most perfect anyhow. I will actually then do um, uh, a feather, so I'll uh, select and uh, modify my selection with the feather. Uh, do 10 pixels on that. Delete. And I think I should be okay. Uh, I'll get rid of this white layer just for now. The only reason why I'm using it is just so I can see the um, the contrast in the background just to make sure that I'm getting everything um, as good as possible uh, deleted from my uh, from my uh, original images and I pretty much did it um, I want to maybe um, move this around a little bit uh, because the last part of my uh, uh, composition I had um, a little bit of that uh, Louboutin logo um, kind of overlaying. It was kind of a subtle treatment there. Um, so it, literally I just took it. So I'm going to grab... Actually, I'll just drag my selection. Oop, that was too much. Um, and then just drag this over into Photoshop. Uh, so this is um, vector artwork, vector-based artwork uh, placed in uh, InDesign. Um, I took it from Illustrator, I dragged it from Illustrator into InDesign. Now I'm literally going to be able to drag it from InDesign into Photoshop. And then just release. And there, it just places it right in there just as a smart object. And then my idea was to just kind of put this here so you can and then I'll hit return to place it. So you can see a kind of a mixture of um, what I thought was interesting is the mixture of um, a conventional illustration, conventional type, and conventional looking but very graphic type, right? So it's very perfect, uh, uh, contrasting to the imperfect, if you will. Um, and to make it, uh, actually, I want to actually bring some of these, this uh, messy, splatter a little bit to the left because I remember in my composition um, my shoe was kind of a little bit uh, angled to the right and you can see I can already see here that I have a little bit of that um, darkness coming through uh, so I'll have to delete that and save 
and just go back to InDesign. You can see here I was kind of figuring out, oh, do I like it better angled and repeated or you know straight and repeated? I definitely, after looking at it for so long, I think I like the angled and repeated better. So I'll just delete the straight spread for now. Sometimes I just have to look at something for a long time before I actually make a decision on it. I try not to do that, but sometimes I kind of force myself to. Um, and then I'll just update the art, see where I'm at. Luckily, I have the shoes um, on their own separate layer, so and that's an InDesign, uh, so I can nudge these around a little bit. Uh, I want some of that logo to peek out. Maybe it's too distracting, you know, because uh, it's kind of a compromise with myself. You know, do I want to focus a little bit more on the product? I think in this case I probably would, so I'll bring it over the logo just a little bit. And I find some of the aspects of the logo interesting, especially when it comes to these stroke pieces. Um, so maybe I'll go back to Photoshop and just nudge it a little bit further to the left, this vector object. Save it and then kind of jump back and, and probably be okay with that. Let it kind of update to a higher res. All right. Yeah. So that's good. Um, you know, then the next thing I would probably do is look at this type and say, okay, you know, um, is this graphic interfering too much with this type? It's a little bit dangerous because I have black and then I also have um, black type here. Uh, what's more dangerous as well is, is that the black type that I have here is real thin um, and, um, and small. Um, uh, because it's just the nature of kind of the brand, right? Um, it's, it's kind of more of a fashion brand. In this case, I think I got lucky, um, and I would, not, I would not mess with it because I can actually still read that. I know this is an M. This is probably one of the worst cases of an overlap here between the type. Um, this is a big issue, the shoe covering the colors here. Um, so how do I solve that? I think I'll just scale this shoe down a little bit just to barely miss that and you're good. Uh, to keep with the product, maybe I'll scale it up the other way a little bit like that. Just to keep that product still in focus and nudge it to the left just a bit tad. And you can, you know, kind of nudge it all day, but if you, you know, I'm approaching it as a problem solving. Is there a problem? Yes. If, if yes, fix it. If no, move on. Um, so uh, if I really wanted to fix this, if a client said, hey, fix that more, um, I can certainly do that. Uh, let me just jump into Photoshop and just show you. Um, if the type was, you know, if this was interfering with the type too much to a client's liking, I could literally just um, uh, take my eraser tool then over this layer, take it to about 30% opacity, and just kind of brush it a little bit, a couple clicks here, kind of create my own gradient feather, save, go back to the original art, or I'm sorry, the de uh, design here, update. And now you can see that, you know, it's a little bit better. Maybe they want it a little more. I could go back and forth all day long. 